The Greens had their first Ontario MP elected. Mike Morris clinched um, uh, Kitchener Centre uh, after the fallout of uh, allegations of uh, uh, impropriety against Liberal incumbent Raj Saini. And he withdrew his candidacy. And Morris will now uh, join two other, well, one other Green for now in the House. And uh, he joins me now, the history-making uh, Green Party MP from Kitchener Center, uh, Mr. Morris, Mike, Mike Morris. Hey, congrats. Uh, you took uh, your second crack at it. Um, you made history. Congratulations. So what's your reaction to the Green Party breaking through in Ontario and, and you're going to Parliament? Yeah, thanks so much, Evan. First of all, it's an honor to, to be here with you. Thank you for having me. And uh, it's pretty surreal. You know, uh, this is three years in the making, hundreds and hundreds of people that were part of not only the campaign back in 2019, but then continued to put in the work over the last number of months to show up for our neighbors, to knock on doors, every street, uh, just to be listening to the concerns and the priorities of our neighbors and now to be in a position to take those concerns, whether it's around, you know, the unaffordability of housing, you know, the gaps in mental health supports, of course, the climate crisis, and to be a voice for those priorities and bring those priorities to Ottawa with an interest in working across party lines to make progress, to respectfully engage with other MPs to uh, to make progress on those. It's uh, something I'm really excited to be getting getting to work to do. Yeah, well, you're representing a community and uh, you've worked hard to get there. Um, but you're going to go there without uh, leader Annamie Paul. She lost her third bid for Toronto Centre. Um, politics is a rough business, as you know. Uh, does she need to resign? Should she stay on as leader? Well, I've really appreciated, first of all, having her support. You know, she was here in Kitchener just a few days ago, and uh, she supported our campaign all the way through, and so I really appreciate her support throughout. I continue to, to support her as, as the uh, leader of the party. And as you know, you know, the party will have a leadership review process in these days and weeks following the election, and that's where, you know, outside of what I think, members will come together and have that conversation. And that's one that, uh, you know, will but, follow. And again, respectfully to, to Ms. Paul, she's been on this program a lot. She's always been superb with her time. Um, so it's, it's not a discredit to her, but, you know, politics is about winning. She's lost. She lost badly in her own riding, fourth place. <laughs> I'm just, I'll just press you, and I know she went to Kitchener Centre, one of the few ridings she went to, to support you. But does she, given the divisions in the party, you know, Annamie Paul lost, Jenica Atwin, who left and then re-ran as a Liberal in Fredericton, won. Does Annamie Paul have a mandate, in your view, to continue on as the leader? Well, as I said earlier, if I'm honest with you, Evan, that you know, this is the review process that is that is to come. And as you know, there was some shift in the volunteers on the federal council, you know, back in early August that I'm really excited about. There's more unity in the party coming out of that, uh, a more divic a, a more diverse set of voices that are now on the federal council. And so, you know, folks like yourself with those kinds of opinions that might be members of the party, alongside other folks who might have different opinions, the time for that conversation will be in the as I said, in, in right. the weeks that follow. For now, I'm just excited to be in a position yeah. to, you know, and with the Greens not having, you know, a whipped vote, to be in a position to uh, represent my community first and foremost and, and to bring the voices of so many to Ottawa, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, uh, um, and you're right. I got questions. You, you, the Greens may have the opinions. I just got the questions. Mr. Moore, just <laughs> last, last question. Please. Climate is, is now emerged as a major, this is the first election that every party had a price on carbon, something that the Greens have talked about. But the Greens didn't seem to benefit from a move towards action on climate change. How do you think the Greens can capitalize on that? Well, I guess the context that I've been in is quite different. I, I, whether I was speaking at a retirement home or whether it was the young people that weren't even able to vote yet, they were too young to vote and came knocking on doors with us. Every neighborhood, every demographic across my community, there is such a call for following the science on the climate crisis. And as you said, a carbon tax is part of that. But Evan, as you know well, we've now, I think it was the last year alone, we tripled the subsidies to fossil fuels. $18 billion a year. It's time to be honest about what scientists and Indigenous leaders and young people have been calling out for, which is to ensure that we move towards following that science and ensure that there's policies in place that allow us to ensure, whether it's kids or, or nieces or nephews or grandkids, that we leave a safe climate future for, for them.
Uh, Mike Morris, first of all, congratulations. You made history. Uh, it's an exciting time. You're also, I see, rocking the green screen behind you with a double pun on that, which I think is great. Uh, just a real pleasure to, to have you on the program. Good luck representing the people of Kitchener Centre. And uh, thanks for your time. I look forward to more conversation, sir. Evan, likewise, such an honor to be here and look, look forward to coming, coming back. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, my pleasure anytime. Um, so that's Mike Morris, and, and that's a huge breakthrough, whatever else you say about this election. Greens breaking through in Ontario is big news.